No, whenever I first started painting, whenever I started painting, um, I had a lot of trouble with that. I a lot of my paintings just looked flat. They didn't have a lot of depth. They didn't have a lot of of anything, and it was really hard for me. And um, I didn't know how to get them to a place where where the faces were round and symmetrical, and where they were. Um, full of life where they looked alive so but then I learned values and I learned how to apply values uh, and paintings were so much more fun they were so much more fun they were so much more lifelike like I was able to you know actually be able to work through my paintings and enjoy the painting so values is a hue and light and dark a lot of people sh will show you like um, a scale of light to gray, a light to dark, I mean, and it's like a gray scale. Um, like if you, if you take a picture and you turn it on gray scale, you'll see all the values. You'll see all of the lights and the darks in the picture. So what do values do? Values bring body and shape into whatever it is you are painting. I've already mentioned this, but it is so crucial and so critical to be able to get shape and form and all the, the right dimensions in your painting. Um, I've been doing a series of paintings recently where I have, um, where everything is dark in the picture and there's like one, one light source coming in a certain direction and there's a lot of contrast and there's a lot of depth and it's really hard. It's really difficult to get, to get those dimensions in there, but it's so worth it because it makes it look so good, so much better than what it did before. When painting, it's best to start off with your values. It's best to start off right from the start. Um, where's my darks? Where's my lights? And to work in your darks first uh, so that you're able to see the contours, I say face a lot the, because I draw people, I paint people quite a bit, but anything that you're painting, whether it's a still life or whether you're painting a dog for someone or if it is a person, paint in the, the dark tones first, paint in the dark hues first, and then work in your lights. Um, work in three different scales. Start with your dark, your darkest darks, and then paint in that mid-tone color, that mid-tone range, and then start it off with the lighter tones. And even the lighter tones aren't gonna be your lightest lights. Those will be some of the last things you will do. It doesn't mean, of course, that throughout painting that you can't go back and forth between, um, you know, between your colors, light and dark. I do that still. Um, I, it's really easy though to start off painting your lights first it's really easy to just go in there and want to put in all the little details to put in all the little um lights and all that stuff i still find myself doing that putting in all the little details of the painting when well, it isn't what you need to do first because it's just fun and it captures your attention and that's what you want to do but that's not what you need to do first here we have me painting an apple of all things. Isn't that what everyone does when they do a still life as an apple? <laughs> or some fruit or a bottle or something like that. So we're going to go over this painting here so that we can learn more about values and we can see it in action. Um, I'm starting off with my low, my low lights, which is the darkest darks of the painting. You start off with the darkest darks. Um, because you can work in the light as you go. There's usually three, there's usually three um, medians of it. There's the darkest darks, the mid, the mid portion, the mid tones, and then the light tones. You don't even put in the, the brightest highlights of the painting in this portion. You just want to get the basic shape of what you're painting. Um, so the apple looks pretty flat without the dark dark tones in there because you add the dark tones into the painting um, the apple becomes round instead of flat and dark and all this stuff um, so the indentions in the top 
um, of the apple. I'm using lights and darks to accentuate it to, so that you can see the indention in the top of the apple. I believe here I am adding in a few details into the painting because I've got the basic shape of the apple finished. Like I said, for whatever reason, I didn't think about doing the background or putting the shadowing on the ground or anything. It's just kind of suspended in midair. But I haven't done a still life in a really long time, so that's probably why I didn't think to do that. But that's very basic. Don't let your your um, object be suspended in midair. It just looks funny. But I'm putting in a few details. This apple was kind of wet, so I'm trying to duplicate the effect of there being wet a kind of a glossy look on the apple um it is very it was kind of difficult to do but um the beauty of oil paint is you can just add in the color straight onto the canvas and then blend uh, into the rest of your paint that's already on the the paper um I'm about to start adding yellows into it to give to give it more of um, that light effect on that end of the painting, as you can see, and it looks pretty good. Um, yeah, so this painting of uh, this apple is it wasn't that difficult to do. It wasn't that hard. I, I kind of expected it to be almost a little challenging just because. Um, I haven't done still lives in a long time, but I quite enjoyed it. Um, you can add more dimension by making, by, I probably could have made the side of the apple darker to give it more dimension, to give it more depth, uh, but I didn't. It's important to blend a lot, to blend, 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 blend whenever you're painting. Of course, some people use harsher lines and harsher strokes, which is cool. It's whatever your style is, really. But I, I enjoy things being blended out, and I like things to look realistic. I like some texture in my paintings, but, but for the most part, I like things to be blended out and all that good stuff. Even in the stem of the apple, I'm going to start off by using really dark strokes and then go in with my lights. I'm not going to start with my lights first. You can go back and forth. You can you can go and go back and forth and play around with it to make sure it has the right balance and everything like that. But just to make sure the apple has the right shape and the right form, the right texture, um, the right depth, it's good to... Start off with your darks, like I said. Now I'm going to go in and put it on top of some sort of table. The poor apple. <laughs> um, this was fun. This was really fun to do. I'm probably going to do more still lifes in the future. Um, I really enjoyed doing this process. Um, but I'm just, I don't even feel in the background here. I'm just put, putting it on a table. I'm just putting it on a table. I'm just making sure it's not suspended in midair. And this painting is complete. So that was it. It was so much fun to do. Um, I haven't done a still life in a while, so I really enjoyed painting an apple today. I really hope you guys, I really hope it helped you guys to give you more confidence in your painting skills and helped you to um, just relax more and have more fun with it and be able to put that depth and dimension into your paintings. So um, I love you. Thanks for watching. Just comment down below if you have any questions about what, what you want to see um, in the video. <laughs> poo poo <laughs> um, about what you want to see in any videos um, I'm wanting to make more videos yeah, where I'm thing? teaching poo -poo. where people are able to learn how to paint if there's any tips or tricks you might want to know about painting just give, give me a, a comment and let me know thank you so much and I'll see you next time bye yeah.